So we've defined these new mathematical objects called vectors, and we've talked about some of the operations that we can do with them. So we can add them, we can subtract them, we can multiply them by scalars, and we've also defined a thing called a dot product. Now, because we're actually working with a new kind of thing, we can't just go ahead and assume that all the normal algebra rules that we'd use, like expanding brackets and maybe adding in different orders or that kind of thing, necessarily apply. So in this video, we're just going to quickly go through some of these properties and check which ones hold uh, for the operations that we've defined. And once we've done that, we can then be confident that what we're doing is actually going to work. Okay, so first we're going to look at um, just our vector addition and scalar multiplication. And essentially what we've got here is a list of operations um, and how they work with um, with vectors instead of with numbers so in this particular case we've got two vectors u and v and we're just going to assume that u and v are vectors in rn okay just remember a vector in rn is just a vector with n numbers in it n real numbers in it okay so this list um once you have a look through it you should find it relatively reassuring because everything behaves the way we expect it to so it doesn't matter whether we add u plus v or v plus u you get the same thing doesn't matter if you've got three vectors u, v, and w, so we'll add w to our list here as well. Doesn't matter in which order you add them together, you'll get the same result, no matter if you add u plus v first or v plus w first, that's good. Um, adding zero to u doesn't change it, no surprises there. So this is just like a sanity check, right? Everything is working the way that we imagine it would. Um, u plus negative u gives us the zero vector. If we have a scalar, outside of a pair of brackets, uh, parentheses, and we multiply u plus v by that scalar, then we can expand the bracket with that scalar, and it all works the way we'd hope. Likewise, if we've got two scalars, we can expand that bracket too, and two scalars multiplying a vector u is the same as multiplying the scalars together first, then multiplying the vector u. And finally, if we multiply the vector u by the scalar 1, we get the same vector back. Okay, so at this point you might be wondering why we'd even bother to do this, because everything seems to be exactly what we'd expect it to be. Um, there'll come a point in this course where we have some objects with algebraic operations defined where not everything works the way that we're familiar with. Okay, so with vectors we're going to find for the most part that they do, but just be aware not every mathematical object behaves this way. So with these rules in mind, we can now do things like manipulate expressions involving vectors, such as this one here. Okay, so A and B, again, will be vectors in Rn. Okay, they could be vectors with two numbers in them, they could be vectors with ten numbers in them, it doesn't really matter. So let's see if we can have a go at this uh, using the rules from the previous slide. So 3A plus 2A minus 2B minus 2A minus B just works how we'd expect. So let's just expand all the parentheses first. So 2 times a. Then we'll have a minus 4 times b because we can multiply scalars together the way you'd expect. We'll have a minus 2a and then we'll have a plus b. And then we can just click the a's and b's together. So we'll get 5a minus 2a's is 3a's. And then we'll collect the b's together. We'll have minus 4b plus a b gives us minus 3b overall. Okay, and so we can manipulate algebraic expressions involving our a and b exactly how we'd expect. And we can also solve equations. So if x is an unknown vector, um, we can solve an equation for x, again, using techniques you'd be familiar with. So again, I'll start by expanding everything. So I'll get 4x, the 2 is multiplied together, and I have a minus 2a here. Now I'm going to put everything involving x on the left-hand side, so I'll subtract 4x from both sides, so I have a minus 4x here, minus 4x over here, will give us our next line, so that will be negative x plus a equals negative 2a. And now I'll subtract a from both sides to clear away the a's. And that will give me negative x is equal to negative 3a. And alternatively, x is equal to a. So the other thing that we defined was the dot product. So remember the dot product is a operation that takes in two vectors. So two vectors in. 
that will be U and V, and a scalar out. Okay, so it just takes two vectors and turns them into a number. Okay, now my numbers don't behave that way, so let's just explore a couple of properties of the dot product. And these are the rules that we're allowed to use when we're manipulating expressions involving dot products. So we have u dot v equals v dot u. So first thing that's reassuring, doesn't matter in which order we do the dot product, we'll get the same answer. Um, you can expand parentheses in this way. If you've got the sum of two vectors v and w and you take the dot product with u, you can expand that and take dot products with um, the two pairs u and v and u and w. Okay, so notice here on the left, we've got a dot product of a vector and another vector, which should give us a number. As a sanity check on the right, we get two dot products, which also give us two numbers added together, which is also a number. So we haven't done anything weird here. If you've got a scalar multiplying one of the vectors, you can bring that scalar outside the dot product. And the last property, which is to do with the length that we defined, dot product of u with itself is always positive or zero. Okay, so you take a ve vector and you take its dot product with itself, you get a positive number, unless that vector is the zero vector. And if that's the case, then the dot product will be zero. And there's no other, no other way to get zero unless that vector is the zero vector. Okay, so we we'll used the rules in the previous slide just to solve a simple problem involving vectors. So essentially we're trying to show that this particular dot product is equal to the difference of u dot u and v dot v. So we'll just practice expanding our brackets. So we've got a vector, a vector u plus v, and we take the dot product with the vector u minus v. Now what we'll do is we'll expand our brackets one at a time. So if we've got vector, so remember the, the rule that we had on the previous slide was something like u dot v plus w equals u dot v plus u dot w. So we'll expand out um, this vector we'll, and we'll keep u plus v together as our u in the top one and then we'll expand out the other side. So that will be u u plus v dot u minus u plus v dot v. Okay, um, now we'll expand out all of these brackets as well. So we get u dot u plus v dot u minus u dot v plus, sorry, minus v dot v. And if you notice back a slide, we also have that the order of the dot product doesn't matter. So we know that u dot v is equal to v dot u. So these two terms here will cancel themselves off. So overall, we'll be left with u dot u. These two will cancel to zero and we get minus v dot v, which is what we were after. Okay, just a quick note about the rest of the text there. It is for all vectors u, v, and r, n, that just means it doesn't matter what vector you use, um, we'll get the same result, so long as they're the same size. Okay, so that's all.